Gratitude! <laughs> so here's a star tetrahedron that everybody's familiar with. And one way of looking at it is that it's eight tetrahedrons that are pointing out from a single point. And because of this cool model and the way it's designed, you just flip these things over, and now you have eight tetrahedrons pointing in to a single point, forming what you call vector equilibrium, where every vector in this whole thing is the same length. It's eight tetrahedrons pointing in, making 12 radial vectors. And it's all the same vectors and all the same geometry. You just flip it over, and there's your star tetrahedron. Flip over both sides, and you get a star tetrahedron. Also, all the vectors in this are the same length, but they're all pointing out, away from the so, center. So well, what happens if you, take, if, if you have a point in the center of that, and you draw lines to all the outer points? I don't know. <clears throat> Some of them are double length then. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah, some of them would be double length, mm -hmm. and you could keep taking pieces that are like this, and just start putting them together, you mm -hmm. know, and make like a continuous. And if you have enough of these, if you had sixteen of these bits, and you made eight star tetrahedrons, you could put those eight star tetrahedrons together and get this. And then when you keep putting more tetrahedrons on the outside of these sixty-four, when you get to five hundred and twelve tetrahedrons, you get another cube octahedron on the outside. And then at 1,026 1, tetrahedrons, you get another cuboctahedron. And so it goes octaves of cuboctahedron forever. Infinitely bigger and infinitely smaller. And it's the cuboctahedron that's the geometry of vacuum. Yeah. Like of a black hole. That's why Nassim thinks the vacuum is infinite tetrahedral array. It's just like this forever. He still hasn't really gone into, though, how the double tube torus and those are really connected. Like, they're, they're shown together and taught together. In the black but... hole, there's that animation that shows the two isotropic vector metrics, right. which is a tetrahedron made of 20 smaller tetrahedrons, and each one has a sphere around it, and then they come together, and they overlap to form this, and that's how you get this, like, double tube torus thing, where it's like... One is pointing this way, and one is pointing this way, the masculine and the feminine, and it comes together and it pinches. So you get vortices like this, and then you get like a equator. So the information goes in, out along the equator, and back. Mm -hmm. But it, it, it's, it's, this is so simplified, it's like, these lines aren't static, it's not just sitting there, everything's spinning. It's scalar dimensions of this, embedded inside of each other, fractal style. Mm -hmm. So it's, this is like a dumbing down... Like, let's make a simple two-dimensional, a three-dimensional vector model so that the human brain can look at it and be like, oh, that's giving you, eluding to a much more complex thing. It would be like drawing a diagram of a human and be like, this is a human being, a picture of a person. But you don't see how cell division works or how mitochondria is transforming and how DNA is transferring information. You know what I mean? Hmm. It's like a very simplified... So this is like... That's like, you can't think of this as like, oh, there's the structure. It's, it's like there's a really simplified, simple three-dimensional model to describe something that is beyond just describing in like very simple terms because it's the structure of space. It's like isn't that like a human not moving? Like that's like seeing a human that's not moving always in static. And I was thinking about what you were thinking about pushing the two together. Isn't like this diagram like this? The star tetrahedron is the two to torus pushed together. Like this would be the simplest form of the two to torus. Two toroids. Yeah, and then if you look from a certain angle, like you would see the yin yang also in there. Like there's a 3D diagram that Nassim made of mm. how the, that turns into the yin yang thing. We should definitely show Jordan that video. Mm. What I did in that in that painting I did in Boulder was basically just taking you you needed a slightly larger circle so if yeah. you went to the center of here and did from here to here mm -hmm. then you could draw a sphere basically that goes all the way around this mm -hmm. and you draw one sphere that goes right here and then this gives you the sphere to here and then this gives you the sphere to here mm -hmm. and it gives you a perfectly oh. balanced one. I do uh, recommend trying it out too because it feels yeah. really good. So in Chinese character this symbol means God. And then if you were to uh, break it up and to see what each symbol means, this symbol means always uh, point to clothing or also fabric. And this symbol means universe. Together, God. <laughs> so the, the fabric of the universe and also is God. Happy. Oh, this means open. And that, that means, means heart. heart. And together. together it means happy. Open heart means happiness. Ta -da.